Okay, guys, we're back to step two. We're going to mix our dough. So I've got my lemon that I made last night. As you can see, it is more than twice the volume uh, that it was last night. We are nice and bubbly and active from that starter. And this is just the all-purpose flour for my lemon. Um, we decided this morning we're going to use the bread flour. Um, my five-year-old really likes how soft and just full that bread was. Um, I'm going to make a veggie soup in the crock pot today with a tomato base from my pantry. Um, nice dry tomatoes that I can. So I think that, that the bread is going to go really nice with that. It'll be really good to soak up that broth with. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I've got everything a little bit pre-measured so that this can be quick and condensed. So I've got just like a little bit warmer than room temperature, kind of warmish water. Um, one and a quarter cups. Come for me. I'm not weighing it. I don't have a kitchen scale. The bread flour is going to take three and a quarter cups. And then just a little quarter cup of the whole wheat flour. The same whole wheat flour that I feed my starter with. So I'm going to start putting it wet. I'm going to put my water in. And then I'll show you. I'm going to use my big ugly white plastic bowl, but then I'm going to put the dough into a clear container um, so that you guys can kind of like watch it bubble and stuff. So, 11. I'm going to do, so basically what you want to do, you want to leave about 25 grams. Um, and I've never fully measured this. I literally just went off of watching several, several, several other people's videos doing their stuff and weighing and measuring and seeing how much they left in their jar. Come for me. So, leave that. I will scoop all that out and put it in my discard jar. Come for me, guys. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. There is always one minute back up for you. I'm going to adjust my camera so you see what I'm doing. If it'll stay like that. Probably not. Mm. like you did with your starter and the water to make the lemon. Uh, it's just the easiest way to get it all mixed, I've found. Um, I've seen people do things in a different order. I think I've seen most people do it in this order. I've definitely done it in a different order because cooking is not baking and I'm more of a cooker. So. Okay, it's good enough. And I'm going to measure out my flour for you guys. I'm filming. Okay. Do not, don't climb up on my shoulders. I'm filming my, my camera right here. So we're going to mix up our dough. Get it nice. I'm very sticky here. I'm very sticky. But 
We're getting it all together. Okay, so I've told you several times that this is my camera and I'm recording. Thank you. <laughs> my kids love to help, um, but they're also super crazy this morning. <laughs> No, not right now, baby. I'll show you. We can watch all of it when I'm all done, okay? Let me record. Don't, Adelaide. Don't, please. Miss Adelaide, I go. Thank you. So after I get everything all mixed, um, at the end of this stage, here we go. Okay, so I'm about here. This is when I'll add my wheat flour. Come for me. I just found that this is what does it for me. So now I'm going to start squeezing it some more. Let's give you a messy. wetter than it looks. Um, yeah. It's just a matter of like kind of squeezing that moisture back out to the surface to soak back up some more of the flour, which is all you're doing when you're kneading and stuff. I do feel a little dry. My oven was a little drier than usual. We're going to scrape, scrape this flower over here. All right, so we've got kind of a nice, rough-looking, but fully saturated blob of dough. Flour and water and starter, which is just flour and water. So I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. It's not water, it's good to know. Your starter will dry like cement. You're gonna wash those baby get on immediately. Or just prepare for that item to be ruined. Um, <laughs> It's very hard to get it off. I my sink runs crazy hot water. Um, I find that helps. Hot water helps. So now I'm gonna come back with a wet hand and just squeeze it and kind of squeeze more moisture into it. Make sure everything is fully mixed. I occasionally look if it feels dry i'll come back and do it again this one feels pretty good and then just for <laughs> for viewers sake i'm gonna put this in here so that in between lifts and folds you guys can kind of see that those bubbles will come back in just like they got they are on the starter and you'll see it rise a little bit and then i'm gonna go put it in my warm spot on top of my stove and we'll be back in about 30 minutes and before someone comes for me i already realized that i forgot my salt so what you generally want is two tablespoons of salt non-iodized i think is preferred I use my pink Himalayan salt. It's just my favorite. It helps with nutrient absorption. It works good. So uh, I came back almost immediately, took my took my dough back and got my hand wet, and I put my two tablespoons in, and I violently reworked uh, my dough a little bit with my wet hand to get that salt in there. 
hopefully it makes it in okay. Otherwise, my brother is going to think it's kind of bland, but whatever. What can you do? I forget stuff every other time. Um, the easiest solution, if you forget yourself and you can't manage to get it mixed in or you're too far into the process by the time you remember, put butter on your bread. Put some jam on it. It'll still rise. Um, all the science will still happen and your bread will still bake and it will still be beautiful. It just won't taste very good. And it also will last like an hour on the counter. <laughs> it, it won't make it to the next day. But it'll still be pretty. So don't forget your salt. Two tablespoons. 